Hello and welcome to worship. This begins the seventh week of Easter, and today we also celebrate the Ascension of Christ our Lord. This is also Memorial Day weekend, and we give thanks and praise to God for the men and women who sacrificed all to defend the freedoms that we enjoy as citizens of this great nation. Please join me in a word of prayer. Almighty God, you are our strength and our shield. We give you thanks for the men and women of our armed forces, past and present, and especially for those who have died while serving. May their sacrifices serve the cause of peace, and may our nation be ever grateful for their service. With your wisdom and strength, guide our military's leaders and give to all people a desire for justice and peace. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. This spring, we had hoped to have representatives from our partners in ministry share updates and messages with us. And we were able to do that, actually, at our uh, last in-person worship service with Campy Walu and Executive Director Clark Baldwin present with us, along with some staff members. Well, this weekend, the Northeastern Iowa Synod has offered a worship service that they have prepared. All of the Synod staff participated in that worship service, and that will be our service this day as well, to hear a message from Bishop Olestad and uh, the prayers and hymns performed by by the members of the Synod staff and their, their families and co-workers. So thank you very much to the Northeastern Iowa Synod for providing this service for us this day. At the end of today's service, please uh, continue to join with us for a medley offered by Jen Beislein in honor of Memorial Day and those servicemen and women of our lives and of our nation who have passed away in service to this country. And with that being said, please enjoy this worship service provided by the staff and families and friends, co-workers of the Northeastern Iowa Synod. Hello, I'm Pastor Steve Brackett, an assistant to Bishop Stephen Allisted here in the Northeastern Iowa Synod. It is our pleasure as a Synod staff to bring you this recorded worship service in order to give our pastors, deacons, worship planners, musicians, worship assistants, and technology specialists a break for a week from their work over the last several weeks in response to the COVID-19 pandemic and social distancing. Many of our congregations have been diligently working to provide you with worship in your home we are a pleasure to give them a break from that in order to present this service to you.
In today's readings, the risen Christ ascends into heaven and his followers are assured that the Spirit will empower them to be witnesses throughout the earth. The disciples were told to not gaze up into heaven to look for Jesus. We find his presence among us as we proclaim the word and share the Easter feast. We too long for the Spirit to enliven our faith and invigorate our mission. Though physically separated from one another, we gather together for worship in the name of the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Baptism is a gift from God to us. This gift is so precious and generous that we invite people of all ages to be washed by the love of God and sealed with the Holy Spirit. Baptism brings us into the family of God and makes us members of the body of Christ. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. Holy God, holy and merciful, holy and mighty, you are the river of life, you are the everlasting wellspring, you are the fire of rebirth. Glory to you for oceans and lakes, for rivers and streams, honor to you for cloud and rain, for dew and snow. Your waters are below us, around us, above us. Our life is born in you. You are the fountain of resurrection. Praise to you for your saving waters. Noah and the animals survived the flood. Hagar discovers your well. The Israelites escape through the sea and they drink from your gushing rock. Naaman washes his leprosy away and the Samaritan woman will never be thirsty again. At this font, holy God, we pray. Praise to you for the water of baptism and for your word that saves us in this water. Breathe your spirit into all who are gathered here and into all creation. Illumine our days, enliven our bones, dry our tears, wash away the sin within us, and drown the evil around us. Satisfy all our thirst with your living water, Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our gathering song is Dearest Jesus at Your Word, hymn number 520.
Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. The hymn of praise is Praise to You, O God of Mercy, hymn number 208. Receive us and our prayers for all the world, and in the end, bring everything into your glory, through Jesus Christ, our Sovereign and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Acts, the first chapter. Luke writes, In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught, from the beginning into the day when he was taken up to heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during forty days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will baptize with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, and all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And when he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. And while he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. And they said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come again the same way as you saw him go into heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm for this morning is Psalm number 47. We will read it responsibly by whole verse. Clap your hands, all you peoples. Shout to God with a joyful sound. For the Lord Most High is to be feared, a great king over all the earth. Who subdues the peoples under us, and the nations under our feet? Who chooses our inheritance for us, the pride of Jacob, whom God loves? God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of the ram's horn. Sing praises to God, sing praises, sing praises to our king, sing praises. For God is king of all the earth, Sing praises with a song. God reigns over the nations. 
God is enthroned on high. The nobles of the people have gathered as the people of God of Abraham. The rulers of the earth belong to God, who is highly exalted. A reading from Ephesians. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that, with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious, glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Good morning, everyone. My name is Deb Backman, and I serve as a Youth and Family Ministry Coordinator for the Northeastern Iowa Synod. Today, I want to talk to all the children about what it means to be a messenger. But we're going to read the story from the Spark Story Bible first. The Ascension. After Jesus died and rose again, he and his disciples got together near Jerusalem. Jesus had some instructions for them. As you know, God is doing amazing things in the world, he said, and your help is needed. We need you to go tell stories about me. Tell your friends and family and everyone you meet what you've learned by following me. Be my witnesses in the world. Then suddenly, Jesus was rising up in the air. What was going on? He was being lifted up into a cloud. Jesus' friends looked around. Two men in white robes had joined them. The men said, why are you just standing around looking up toward heaven? Don't worry, Jesus will come back someday. Right, said one of Jesus' disciples. Meanwhile, we have some work to do. Let's get going. How many of you have parents that give you jobs around the house? I know my parents did when I was younger. And let me tell you, I did not like the job of cleaning my room. But sometimes the jobs are hard to do. For us right now, I know staying at home can be hard. Doing homework online, not seeing our friends, those are hard things to do. But I also remember that sometimes it's fun to do some jobs. I remember helping my mom in the kitchen, baking and cooking. But the thing about jobs is they, not, they are not just for us. They are for us to help other people. Before Jesus ascended into heaven, he gave his disciples a job to do. He gave them a job to be messengers to everyone in the world. They were to tell people what Jesus did about dying on the cross, rising again for each and every one of us so that we can live forever with him. And you know what? That's our job now too. Our job is to tell everyone we meet how much Jesus loves them and all that he did for us. Now turn right now to someone you are worshiping with and tell them how much Jesus loves them. Did you do it? Excellent. Now this challenge for you this week is to share to everyone that you meet and many people that you don't meet, how much Jesus loves them. Many of us are staying home, and I hope you are all being home and staying safe. But maybe take some sidewalk chalk if you have it. Go outside to your driveway and your sidewalks and write in big, bold letters that Jesus loves you. People who are walking by can see that message. Or if you don't have sidewalk chalk, maybe make a sign to put in your front window or on your front door. And then when you do go out safely, that you can tell people you encounter and also show them the love of Jesus in so many ways. Let's close our time together in a word of prayer. Dear Jesus, help us to keep telling your story until you come again. Amen. Thank you for joining me today, boys and girls.
The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the eleven and those with them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the Law of Moses, the Prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the Scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and see, I am sending upon you what my Father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them, and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him, and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple, blessing God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Thank you. I have been inspired by what I have seen taking place in our congregations as they continue to find new ways to tell the old, old story. In fact, we were so impressed, we dedicated an entire Northeastern Iowa Synod star to, uh, to highlight and feature some of those things that are taking place in our parishes, whether it's d daily devotions or electronic round robins. Um, it's just it's just inspiring to see how our people, our leaders, our pastors and deacons, our worship leaders have decided, and musicians have decided not to be defeated by the pandemic, but to rather be creative. Uh, I'll also mention that it is a whole lot more work uh, than just simply writing a sermon and proclaiming it. Uh, two different pastors have told me that they get everything done, they get the sermon done, they get the worship outlined, and then they take six hours on the video machine um, making the IT stuff work. So thanks for all the extra efforts that our roster has gone to. I also want to thank the members of this synod who have decided that their commitment to the mission of Jesus Christ is uh, more important than their convenience. And so they have continued to give generously to support that mission and we are carefully stewarding those dollars. Thank you for that witness. That too is inspiring. We are featuring the Ascension in this service today. Uh, it's, a, it's a festival of the church that was really one of the highest festivals uh, for centuries. Now it's kind of forgotten because it falls in the middle of the week and all those kinds of things. But, um, it also is something that I had to learn quite a bit about because what I had thought the Ascension was about turns out that that's not quite the way we as Lutherans look at it. There's a beautiful stained glass window at St. Peter in green uh, featuring the Ascension. And it's biblical. It, it tells the story that our readings today told. Um, it also makes it look like it's the great escape. And that is what I believed. Uh, I went to seminary and learned a new word or two. One of them was ubiquitous. And um, so now when you go to seminary, you already have one of those seminary words. Ubiquitous or the ubiquity of God means that God is everywhere at all times. You can't kick God out of your life. God is present. And that concept evolves from what we understand in the Lutheran Church to be the ascension. It's not the great escape. It's the great entrance into all of creation. And this gives us a talking point, shall we say, with the Reformed tradition, including the Presbyterians, the Presbyterians want to make sure that the sovereignty of Jesus Christ is sacred, that he ascends into heaven and literally sits at the right hand of God 
where he is Lord of all creation. Lutherans talk about how the ascension of Jesus is about how he enters into all of creation. It's the great entrance. It's the, the place of the ubiquity of God. And so the lordship of Jesus is expressed in his presence in all of creation. Uh, we even include that concept in our ordination rite where we talk about how Jesus ascends and the previous translation was filling all of creation. And now he, we say he ascends into heaven where Christ pours out his gifts abundantly on the church. Same concept. The ascension is not a way of escaping earth. It is a way of entering into all of creation. Um, some folks get this, but it does make for lively debates among the various denominations. It's just one more example of the Bible clearly says something and then we interpret it. And various interpretations lead us to various denominations. But Martin Luther understood it. He said um, that God writes the gospel not in the Bible alone, but also on trees and in the flowers and clouds and stars. That's the ubiquity of God. That's how the gospel is proclaimed in all of creation, because Jesus now fills all of creation. There's a one of my favorite songwriters, hymn writers, is uh, Nikolai Grunfig. He's probably most famous for O Day Full of Grace. Um, but the Grundtvigs, uh, the people who followed his teaching, found themselves in conflict with some other folks within the church. Grundtvig believed that there's a living word and a dead word. And the living word is that which is proclaimed and taught. And the dead word is anything that's in writing, including the Bible. Well, you can see where that will lead to conflict in the church. Um, and it eventually broke off into other, uh, other branches of Lutheranism. But Grundtvig had this figured out, that somehow God is in all things. This was not a song by Grundtvig, but it's one of my favorite, favorite Danish songs. Um, it, it gives an example of kind of a fun, light-hearted uh, interpretation of Grundtvig's theology about the importance of creation and God's presence in creation. The first verse is this. Hustle up, you lazy, good-for-nothing sofa lover. Dust the cobwebs from your soul. Join our happy song as we stride along through the forests and the fields, our goal. Take your leave from books, our dusty, musty friends and tyrants, and declare your liberty. Books may be okay for another day, but today we will be gay and free. Blue skies are calling, gentle winds are blowing, kind Mother Nature heals the pain and ends decay. Where flowers bloom and quiet streams are flowing, we find the strength to meet the tasks of today. If you need to be more aware of the presence of God, you go for a hike. That was a part of this whole philosophy or understanding of the presence of God in all of creation. Um, you, you, I mentioned O Day Full of Grace. There's an alternative verses printed in our hymnal or worship book. And here are a couple to again make the point. Yea, were every tree endowed with speech, and where were every leaflet singing, they never with praise God's worth could reach, though earth with their praise were ringing. Who fully could praise the light of light, who light to our souls is bringing. As birds in the morning sing their praise, God's fatherly love we cherish, for giving to us this day of grace, for life that shall never perish. The church God has kept 2,000 years, and hungering souls did nourish. Again, an appreciation for the presence of God, whether it's the singing of the birds or the, or the trees endowed with speech, 
Um, this is the ubiquity of God. Well, I think uh, I've been watching a little bit too much news, and it would be easy to believe that God's not the only thing that's ubiquitous, but rather the uh, coronavirus is as well. And it is extraordinarily serious. It is present everywhere. Steve and I are practicing uh, social distancing. We wear masks into the office. Um, it, it is real. It's, it's dangerous. And it's going to be with us for a while. But we can block, block it. We can care for how we relate to other people. We can wear our masks. We can make sure that there's distance that makes us safer. Uh, we can only go out uh, for things that are essential and not make quick trips uh, all over to run errands. It is, it's the virus as all-consuming as it is, and it is very serious, uh, does not match the ubiquity of God. You can't block God's presence. You can't kick God out of uh, a school or a culture or, or a, any building. You can't even kick him out of your life. Once God has decided to be your God, that will be the way it is your whole life. That is what it means for Jesus to ascend and fill all of creation. I again am grateful for everything that our members, our leaders are doing to maintain a healthy witness and a safe witness. Uh, we, we can't uh, stress this enough that when the time comes for us to gather again in worship, in person-to-person -person worship, we will do that safely. It's not now, but it is coming. And when we gather, whether it's electronically, um, through websites or Facebook pages, or when we're back face-to-face, -face, person to person. God is present because Jesus has ascended and has filled all of creation. Amen. Our hymn of the day is O Day Full of Grace, Hymn number 627.
with the whole church, let us confess our faith using the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and on the third day rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and he is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Living God, you chose us to be your witnesses in the world. We pray for the church in every place and the congregations in our synod. Focus our hearts and minds on the ministry we share in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, all creation sings praise to you. You delight in the oceans and the mountains are your throne. Teach us humility and respect for our home. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Sovereign God, you rule the heavens, the earth, and time itself. Make this a time of justice, peace, and solidarity among all nations and peoples, so that oppression and violence rule no more. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. Tender God, we wait with hope for your presence to heal us, Bless us, restore us, and give us peace. You know all the names of those who are sick and suffering. We pray this day for all those who have been affected in any way by COVID-19. We pray for the safety of healthcare workers and first responders. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayers. prayers. Gentle God, you guide us as we seek wisdom. We pray for teachers, professors, theologians, daycare workers, and all those charged with teaching the young and old. Give them endurance and persistence in their valuable work. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Saving God, we give you thanks for all those who have worked to bring your gospel of hope and healing to people's homes during this time of social distancing. Pastors, deacons, worship assistants, worship planners, musicians, and technology specialists. We look with anticipation to the time when we will once again be able to gather in person in our sanctuaries. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. Infinite God, your inheritance given to all your saints is your presence in our life and in our death. We remember with thanksgiving the faithful departed especially Nicholas Copernicus and Lenhard Euler, scientists whom we commemorate today, and all those we have lost and have been unable to properly honor during this time of social distancing. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. 
The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please greet one another with a sign of Christ's peace. I saw this wonderful cartoon where Satan says to Jesus, See, with one virus, I closed all your churches. And Jesus replies, Yes, and in three days, I opened a church in every home. The congregations of Northeastern Iowa have been amazing in their resilience, outreach, and all their other ministries. The latest issue of the Synod's newsletter gives pages and pages of examples of how congregations are continuing worship, confirmation, Sunday school, Bible study, youth ministry, and much more all virtually and safely. Our congregations are amazing. I like the expression, the church isn't closed, it's been deployed. But this means the congregations still need to pay the bills to make all this new ministry possible. We are all incredibly grateful to everyone who has maintained their financial support to their congregation by either mailing in their offering or better yet, by using electronic giving. Thank you. Almost everyone is receiving a stimulus check from the federal government. If you have not experienced a financial setback, perhaps you would consider sharing a part of that stimulus with your congregation, or your local food shelf, or the Northeast Iowa Food Bank, or Lutheran Services in Iowa, to help those who have had an income loss because of the virus. Again, thank you for your tithes and offerings to your congregation during this difficult time. Let us pray. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. For your word of life, O oh God, we give you thanks and praise. By your word you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O oh God, we give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, and the way of your self-giving love. For your word of life, O oh God, we give you thanks and praise. Send your spirit of truth, O oh God, rekindle your gifts within us, renew our faith, increase our hope, and deepen our love for the sake of a world in need. Faithful to your word, O God, draw near to all who call on you, through Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The God of all grace bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our sending song is a hymn of glory let us sing, hymn number 393.
be of good courage, hold fast to that which is good, render to no one evil for evil, strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the afflicted, honor all people, love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Again, thank you to Bishop Stephen Olestad and the Northeastern Iowa Synod staff for providing our worship service this day. And thank you to Jen Beislein for offering us the gift of special music as we conclude our service with a medley in honor of Memorial Day weekend. God bless you, take care, and we hope to see you again very soon. Amen. <laughs>